Okay, so welcome to part, I'm not even sure what part we're on. Anyway, so in this particular video segment, um, we're working on um, the storage, optical drives, power wires, and connecting the case wires to the motherboard. Now, I thought I had a Blu-ray drive. I don't know where it went. I don't know if I lost it or if it's just gone somewhere during the move. Whatever. So I'm not going to have an optical drive for now. I have my secondary computer if I really have to burn anything. Um, so for now, what we're going to be doing is I want to get the motherboard sorted. But there's one thing to keep in mind. In this particular case, if you want to put in a hard drive, it's quite easy. All you have to do is squeeze these brackets, slide it out, put your hard drive in, done. Now, there's an issue with this case if you have a solid state drive, which is quite small as you can see. If you put it here, it's gonna fall and it's gonna rock around. Some people, I kid you not, actually put this on and tape it around. I don't like to do that. I just think that's insane. I won't be doing that. Um, so what I have to do is buy a 2.5 hard drive or SSD bracket, which is this, this is an SSD, to a 3.5 dray kind of conversion. So this bay, it's going to sit here and this SSD will sit in the bay on top. There's no particular order you have to do this in. You can put the optical drives and storage drives in first. You can work on power or the case. I want to work on the case. Now the issue here is figuring out which fitting and slot on the motherboard is going to work with which particular wire for the case. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory and they have a very particular fitting so you can't get it wrong. For example, um, right here, in very fine little writing on this particular port, it says USB 3 underscore 12. So I know that's going to be USB 3.0. Uh, and that's going to be this particular wire right here. And the fitting is quite unique. It's, you know, it's just going to slide in there. And there's a hole on, well, this side. And there's a bracket underneath here. So it can only fit. Nothing else is going to fit there. Um, but when it comes to, like, connecting some of the power supply wires and differentiating between the uh, wires for the case and where they go. It can be a little bit confusing, but majority of them have very particular fittings. I would consult your motherboard manual, or I would just research on the net if you're not sure. Um, most of the fittings are very unique. So the issue I have in this particular case is, for example, the manufacturer put everything through the slot here. This. USB 3.0 wire, just for this example, has to go up here. It can't reach. Um, so I have to feed it back through, because I actually have another backside panel, feed it back through here or here, and then plug it in. So this is actually going to be a lot of work, very time consuming. So let me just show you my case, what it work, looks like on the other side. So as you can see, I've taken off this side panel as well, because I do have that option and all the wires for the case are these and they're fitted here so for example if I want to get the USB 3.0 wire out I'm gonna to have to find it on this back side and push it through that's it so I'm just gonna have to keep doing that for the motherboard wire uh, so for example this huge one over here is not for the case it's for the power so there it says MB for motherboard uh, some motherboards will actually have this additional requirement as well so I have my work cut out for me so I'm gonna be skipping a lot of this just because it's kind of boring and we'll skip over to when we're ready to put the hard drive solid state drive in and the bracket for the solid state as well okay so much of the computer has pretty much been connected um, things are pretty self-explanatory so for HD audio it clearly says on the motherboard HD audio um, for the fan connections, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You have some parts on the motherboard saying CPU fan, which I connected the CPU fan itself to. And I have a whole bunch of other ports for my uh, various fans that came with the case. All the cable management has been pushed to the back because I have these vents here um, going across another one at the back. So that wires can be pushed to the other side of the case. I'm going to rotate the case for you guys in just a moment, but right now I want to get my uh, storage drives connected and up and running. Now, I had purchased a SSD 2.5 to 3.5 bracket. What I didn't know about my case is that it actually, you don't need to do that. You don't have to buy that bracket adapter. There's actually four holes here which were implemented just for this situation where I would just screw in the SSD just on top and it would just sit like that. So, <clears throat> did I make a mistake of buying a $10 bracket to hold an SSD? 
Yes, I did. Um, am I wasting money? No, because knowing myself, I'm going to upgrade another computer or something else down the line. So knowing how I am with computers, I'm most likely going to make use of it. But this is part of the learning experience. You will make mistakes, even if you're quite tech savvy. Okay, so because this bracket is designed for a 3.5 uh, inch hard drive, this one does not require any screws. I actually have some holes, uh, sorry, some holes on the hard drive with some pins sticking out of the case. So because it's plastic, you kind of flex it out and you're just going to basically position it inside. And you're going to line up some of the pins with the holes. So that's left side is done. It's quite hard to show you guys, um, but basically I want this pin here to line up with this hole there. And the same with the other side. Put that in there. And this thing is not going anywhere. There's no need for screws. It's just going to stay there. Um, so that's pretty much set to go as well. Okay, so this is pretty much what the back looks like. Um, I just reverse the case around. And again, I have this side panel that can come off. And this is where all the cable management is going to be done. Um, so I still have quite a bit of wires sticking out. Um, but this, this is like, it can't be used. So there are still a couple here that need to be utilized. Um, this is for my graphic card, VGA. Um, so I'm going to actually stick that in. I think the best spot will be to go through here. So this is basically the what I've been doing with the segment where I cut off and just kind of skipped. I've just been routing wires through one another and just trying to figure out where's the best place to feed the cables with enough space, and but not too much slack. But if there is slack, I can always just pull it back here and bundle this all up together when I'm finally done. This zip tie here was already placed and unclipped um, from the manufacturer, which didn't really affect me, but if you have to, you might have to unclip this yourself, depending on what type of case and uh, computer design you have. So what I'm going to do is actually put the SATA here, or SATA rather. So that's for connectivity. I'll get power up and running in just a moment. It's going to go there. That just clips in just like that. But right now my two drives have no power. Um, this is actually a similar setup to optical drives, which again, I don't know where my Blu-ray Blu drive went, but basically the connections look pretty much like that. It's the same L shape as SATA, but just longer. That's pretty much it. So, uh, because it's a semi-modular case, it wasn't connected to, sorry, power supply. It's not connected to the power supply. This is something I have to do myself and then feed the wires through here, wherever I want, and then connect the power. Okay, so I got everything connected. Um, this is actually quite thick. I have to somehow compress this down and put this side of the case on. And originally I had fed the um, graphics card power wire through here, both of them. Um, but due to the slack, it wasn't working too well, so I had to refeed it back through here. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't record the whole part. It just wouldn't take in forever, and I spent a good chunk of time kind of fixing the wires. I have to sometimes put it through, realize it's not working too well, take it back out, put it through a better one. Uh, and as you can see, majority of them pretty much come around here. That's just the way my motherboard is designed so that most of the parts have to go through here with the wiring. Um, so now I have to attempt to bundle this all up and put the case on and this side should hopefully be done. I'm double checking any wires. And one thing to keep in mind also, um, before recording this particular segment, as you can see, I've, I don't know if you guys can see, I've changed my clothes because it's the next day. Uh, last night I powered on the case. The reason I did that without having even an SSD or any operating system was to make sure that the power wire um, that's feeding from the power button of the case was connected properly to the motherboard because I want to be able to turn the computer on and off. Because if I wrap up everything and I figure out that I can't turn it on, I have to kind of find out where is the problem. So the fact that I can turn the computer on means I wired the casing wires correctly. So it's a nice little thing to do just to make sure everything's okay.
Okay, so I got the back panel on, or rather the other side panel, with a tremendous amount of struggling because I had to rearrange wires yet again and uh, kind of just use my entire body to press the case as it would slide because I could barely get it on. Uh, that's one thing I don't like about these performance cases is that the other side, they never seem to leave enough room for slack. But um, now I have this another struggle because I have a fan on the uh, other side. I have to somehow connect these wires while also holding the fan up, uh, or the side panel. So I have to connect this, put the side panel on, and we are hopefully entirely done. So I only have like one more port left to connect the fan on to, so I'm going to be struggling with that now. I'm going to find a good spot to put it on. Actually, it's the, it's the last spot of my um, motherboard. So the computer has finally been built and put together and it did take a while for me to install Windows because I couldn't find that Blu-ray optical drive I was talking about at first, so I had to install Windows via USB stick. I was actually able to find that Blu-ray drive after Windows is installed, which is typically my luck, but hey, I got it plugged in and working. And of course it's always nice to know that pressing that power button will operate this beauty of a PC. And of course, if you're making a PC that's on a lower budget, it's still satisfactory to know that it's up and running and this is all your hard work placed together. I generally though have to say I'm very pleased with the performance of my particular PC build. So far I'm playing games on max graphics like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Arkham Knight Origins on max graphics without the PC breaking a sweat. But then again, as I mentioned, I'm almost two years behind in video game playback, so it'll be interesting to see the performance when I reach new gen console games like games that are also available on Xbox One and PS4 and see what the PC equivalent will be like, especially The Witcher 3, which I'm especially stoked about. So I do hope you guys were able to enjoy this video series, and I do really hope that it helps someone out there in building their own PC. So be sure to hit the like button and check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help, and if you do want to see more PC videos in the future, maybe even next year, I can make it a yearly thing. Be sure to let me know in the comments section, and I might be interested in doing that for you guys. But anyway, enjoy and take care.